guys, today I am at base camp. I'm still here in Peru in the middle of nowhere. I haven't been feeling too good the past couple of days. I've been nauseous, I've had headaches, and a bunch of other stuff that you guys probably don't want to hear about. So I'm here with Dr. Heike. I said it right, right? Yes. <laughs> it's always like I want to say in a Finnish accent because it's like Heike, Heike. Yeah, don't <laughs> that. He's gonna go over symptoms today and tell you guys all the dangers and stuff with going up in the mountain. Because you guys are like, oh my god, who cares? She's just going up in the mountains, no big deal. There's a lot of like diseases and sicknesses and things that can happen to you. Lately, I've been feeling like I'm gonna die. Yeah, I feel like shit today. I mean, I'm fine now, almost fine. Better every day. Yeah, every day you get a little better. Always when you are going higher than 2,500 meters, there is a risk for up and we have came up to 12,000 feet. It takes usually one to three days to add up. When you go up that high in elevation, it's just, you get crazy shit starts to happen. It's quite common to have a headache. I feel really shitty. Heart rate is rising, you, you will breathe more deeply. I've been getting like back pains where I've never had back pains before. Headache, you might have a nausea. <coughs> Sleeping is not as good as normally. Your appetite might be lost. Oh yeah. Well, first days. Yeah. And I've just been having like the worst headache. Yeah, I've had like no appetite the first few days I got here, and like sleeping has been awful. Sleeping was awful yesterday mm -hmm. because it was so cold. I'm out of breath. I feel like I'm sick. I don't know what I have. And I slept in like all my clothes. I slept in like three jackets and pants and everything. But apparently you're not supposed to. The sleeping bag is supposed to like you're supposed to heat it up by yourself. So. Not supposed to wear a lot of clothes in the sleeping bag, but I mean it's so hard. It's so hard to just get in the sleeping bag, not wearing anything, and just be warm. Cause I don't know. I tried that with my feet, and it didn't work. So my face is numb. My hands are numb. Sometimes have... you get moisture inside the tent, and yeah. uh, because those sleeping bags are so good that you you can sleep in those bags even in 30 degrees minus Celsius. Yeah, the first two nights we didn't open up anything in our tent so we woke yeah. up it was all frost and the inside the sleeping bag was all moisture and it was so disgusting and things are dripping on you and it's just been disgusting <laughs> yeah it's so freezing cold when you wake up right, so what what can happen on the mountain yes of course there there is always possibilities to for accidents there might be avalanches rocks may fall down uh the kind of things uh sun burns like i didn't think altitude sickness would be a thing before this trip and then every time I came like to a higher altitude it was harder and harder to breathe and I've just been acclim acclim acclimatizing <laughs> acclimatizing yes, right? yes. <laughs> yeah and we're gonna keep going up higher and higher first it was 10,000 feet and now it's 14,000 feet and then we're gonna go what 18,000 feet in the yeah. mountain which is gonna be crazy and the summit of Tokyo you would say 20,000 right oh. So up to 20,000 feet above sea level, so... If you are not aware of altitude, it may get worse. Like pulmonary edema, high altitude pulmonary edema, or high altitude cerebral edema. It's both can be cut out. So the pulmonary... What, what is that? Is that when? It means that you get the liquid or fluid in your lungs, mm. and it's blood in your lungs, and when it's this much, you can't breathe anymore, and you die. Oh, uh, okay. How does it start? Uh, usually, uh, it's, it may start like normal altitude illness, headache, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, uh, fatigue, uh, problems. And uh, when you do some heavy exercise, you might realize that your heart rate doesn't go low anymore. You start to get off. There might be a clear or pink coming out to your lungs when you are coughing yeah. and um, more and more, more breathing problems tracking in your lungs when you are breathing I feel like that's gonna happen to me uh, well I know you try to avoid that you're not pushing yourself too hard yeah. so guys if you're up in the mountains and you don't you just keep going keep pushing yourself you're gonna get pulmonary edema and then you will die is that how a lot of people died on this mountain a lot of people actually died climbing this mountain I think like three last week or two weeks ago yeah and then like eight um, a couple weeks ago yeah uh, eight person died in what 
Mosca run, which is a famous nose from here, mm -hmm. mainly for avalanches. Oh, okay. How and do you that, prevent avalanche? Well, you, <laughs> you can't can. prevent that, but you can choose which road you go. And oh, that's why okay. we, we usually start very early, because during the night it's freezing, all the ice fields and, uh, and uh, stones are frozen. So they want to fall down, yeah. but in the afternoon ice starts to smell. Smell uh, if it, it may fall down. And oh, okay. avalanches are more common after the than morning. So we choose the path with no avalanche, and well, we're gonna get up at four o'clock, and then we're gonna start hiking at like around five. So yeah, we're gonna do that tomorrow, and I'm excited. So yeah, that's all for today. Thank you, Dr. Hiking. <laughs> you <welcome>. Dar <laughs> I, this Offered is head that. shake compilation. <laughs> <laughs> make sure to check out Ultimate Expedition on YouTube Red and make sure to hit that like button in the face and subscribe, join the wolf pack. Ow! I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.